Recently, I passed the BC Knowledge Exam and received my L lessons. Now for me, as an 18-year-old, and for countless other people like me, this seems the greatest blessing I could possibly get. Finally, in this sheet of paper, I've been given freedom. The road and everything that lays at the end of them will finally be mine. No more would I have to slay away on public transport or grind for every mile with the push of a bicycle pedal. It is a moment that feels infinitely special, and I was beyond excited to get behind the wheel and begin exploring it. And yet when I did, something struck me. Cars were everywhere. It seemed as if the whole world has the same goal of driving and has begun driving as early and as often as possible. And that brought to mind a big and a worrying question. What about the environment? All those cars and all the carbon dioxide they were producing was my dream of driving causing more harm than good. We've all heard these statements. Driving your car is destroying our future. Use public transport if you care about the environment or switch to two wheels to reduce carbon emission. Of course, these statements come from a positive place because we all need to do our job to protect the environment. And carbon emission has played a huge part to the damage that we've already done to the planet. In a dream world, we could all go fully carbon neutral, cycling everywhere we need to go. It is a global goal and one that we should absolutely make a priority in everything we do. But for me, this goal is still a faraway one. And this wish to do as little damage as possible to the environment presented the first stumbling block in my driving journey. The fact of the matter is this, our world isn't made for busing or biking your way everywhere you need to go. The infrastructure simply isn't there for everyone. In some places, public transport system is poorly developed and resources for cyclists are next to non-existent. And there's the ever-present issue of something just being too far away. And for people in those situations, our carbon neutral dream world is exactly like that, a dream. For me, this has always been an issue. The streets where I live are steep, so much so that it often seems as if there are more hills than flat roads. Located directly on my road to school, it's a particularly nasty one with an almost impossible steep incline plus a sharp curve. Despite being able to cycle, I'm far from Lance Armstrong on two wheels, I'm far more likely to go crashing headlong to the forest or cleaning through someone's front window than to reach my destination. So biking was out of the question for me from an early stage. Public transport also presented issues. The transport network simply isn't good enough to get me to where I need to be and actually added more inconvenience than was manageable. So I was left with only one option, and that option is driving. But I couldn't ignore the negative impacts cars can have, and how could any of us? I am part of the climate change generation, who's been told over and over of the destructions human beings are causing to our environment. I decided I need to do better. If I had to drive, I would drive in the least harmful way I could. Yeah. And I would put the work into finding out exactly how to do that. The most obvious starting point was the car itself. A clear choice for maximum benefit is a fully electric vehicle with zero carbon emissions compared to a traditional car's 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide produced every single year. Its popularity has skyrocketed as more people realize the benefit it provides. It is an excellent choice for the environment, but for me and for many young people like me, it is not a choice that most of us can make. Being relatively new on the market, they're often far too expensive for us to afford. It is an excellent choice for the environment, but for me and for many young people like me, it is not a choice that most of us can make. Being relatively new on the market, they're often far too expensive for us to afford. And despite the undeniable positive aspect it has, budget flexibility is not something young people and countless older people really has when it comes to choosing a vehicle. The next best option is a gasoline car with good fuel efficiency and low emissions. And here, your options become a lot wider. Unfortunately, this isn't an area Canada does particularly well in. According to a study done by International Energy Agency, or average vehicle rank lasts in fuel economy. The math here is simple. The more fuel you burn, the more carbon you emit. So it should come as no surprise that we also come last in carbon emissions. 
the car that I drive, a Honda CRV, does better than this. With a fuel consumption of 7.9 liters per 100 kilometers, it comes a whole liter below the national average. And this small reduction in fuel leads to a reduction of approximately 2.3 kilograms of carbon dioxide being pumped into our atmosphere. And average out over a year, I am using 150 liter less fuel than most and contributing 350 kilograms less carbon dioxide. So, if average driver took similar steps and those that can took even larger ones, the difference in environmental impact would be utterly phenomenal. And with the right car choice, we can go further for less money and cause significantly less damage to the environment. So that covered my car choice. I've ticked one box and down as much as I could in that field with the options available to me. But that wasn't enough. Choosing a car to drive was, wasn't the end of my goal. It was just the beginning. Equally important was how I drove. Learning how to drive well enough and get your lessons is all well and good, but learning how to drive efficiently should be the next step for our drivers. And so, with a new goal in sight, I set about finding the ways I could improve my driving to further reduce my environmental impacts. The first method was speed Ryan's. According to Natural Resource Canada, Run your speed by just 10 km per hour between 75 to 85 km per hour every 18 seconds can increase your fuel use by 20%. And doing this will almost instantly remove any benefits my car trust gave me. So, maintaining a steady speed becomes the priority. Dips and burns means more fuel burns, and we should all try our best to avoid that. The next step was accelerating and decelerating. Hard accelerating and braking uses far more fuel than doing so gently and none of us should be drag racing in the street. And despite the busy life we all live in this modern world, we should almost always be able to add that gentleness to our driving. Anticipating accelerating and braking is the key here. Not only will it make your driving so much more fuel efficient, it is also much safer. And the safety of both you and those around you on the street is always paramount. The third and perhaps most obvious method I discovered was avoiding idling your car. Leaving the engine running when parked is absolutely terrible for fuel efficiency, wasting almost an entire liter of fuel per hour. It is tempting, of course, when a passenger needs to run out for a quick errand or when we're only stopping for a short while to leave the engine running over. And there's a common misconception that shutting the engine off during these quick stops uses more fuel than a restart. And that is exactly a misconception. And idling for even 10 seconds uses more fuel than a restart. Many newer models will deal with this for you, and they can automatically shutting down the engine when you're at a complete stop, but that was not an option for me, so I had to learn to shut it down myself. So, that was my driving journey. From unfettered excitement when I got my license, to self-doubt and even guilt when I realized the damage I might be causing. That was a long one. But I committed to doing the work, to doing my research, to actively making choices and lessen that damage. These are the choices we can all make, especially those of us who cannot choose a bus or bike. And before we achieve the dream world where cars aren't necessary, these are the choices we have to make. There's still time for you all to change lanes, just like I did. Mm -hmm.